before we get going, if you have any questions, feel free to ask below. I always try to answer to the comments. For those that don't know me, my name is Melba. I am an urban home gardener and I try to grow as much as I can in food and flowers in my tiny backyard. So if you want to know more about roses and how to grow them, how to choose them, how to maintain them, feed them, prune them, anything that you need to know to have an amazing experience in the garden, go ahead and stick around. One is a basket. I carry a basket around and I try to put my blooms or diseased leaves in it. If they fall on the floor, I pick them up immediately. This is like the best prevention. Another thing that I always do is I maintain a little pot. This is a clay pot. I put vegetable oil and I put my pruners on it so I have large pruners small pruners so i mostly use the small pruners unless i'm working with the actual large branches of the rose but for every day this works really well these little small pruners are comfortable you just have to make sure that they're sharp and i'll show you here a little tool that i use to to do it i also take a pair of scissors with me when I'm doing it and twine because if you're climbing roses, I'm always going to tie them. It's good for you to tie them as they go so that they don't get all over the place or they grow so big and thick the branches that you can adapt them. This is another really important piece, alcohol. I place alcohol in a jar after I prune one rose before I go to the next one. I go ahead and I dip my pruners and the alcohol and that prevents diseases from going all over the place to other roses those are my tools this is absolutely where the fun begins so do not be intimidated all you have to do is find a spot in your garden that gets eight hours of sun now that you found the right spot now make sure that it has great airflow because you don't want it to grow disease on it and the second thing is what type of rose do you want to grow? Do you want to grow in a pot? Do you want to grow it up a trellis? Decide what is the type of rose and select that beautiful rose you've been dreaming of. One small detail that sometimes we don't think of is make sure you can reach the rose from wherever you are. That way you can maintain it and it will do really well. Someone is coming out and I'm not very good at wearing SPF. I'm working on it, but at least wear your hat what is it that makes the biggest difference when you grow roses to have plenty of blooms happening like you can see little balls that are about to start blooming to me the soil specifically compost you can have terrible soil on your ground but if you use the right compost it will make a huge amount of difference for me fish compost I don't use any manure compost or anything like that because I'm always afraid of diseases. I had a friend who told me that she uses salmon compost every spring. She has it delivered. I have a small garden, so I'm not going to have it delivered, but I found just fish compost. I used it for years now. Had terrible experience with manure compost. It works for some people. For me, it didn't. It gave, gave me um, just had a bunch of mold on it and I ended up having to dig it all out. It was not fun. I pretty much put three to four inches of fish compost in the spring and then every month I put a couple inches on. My soil is terrible soil here. I have built it over the years but I always do this. You have to have good soil. Fish compost made a huge difference. The compost is nice and rich and I use it on my veggies, on my flowers. This is best compost I've found so far. One other layer that I add when I put fish compost is I always put warm earth castings and any help with the root development, getting blossoms, and it even helps with diseases. You can even take the warm earth casting, dilute it on water, let it sit a few days, strain the soil out and spray that to your roses. I have done that also, and it helps with uh, diseases. Let's talk about which rose do you want to grow on your space now that you know where to place it. One of the roses that I love to grow are rose trees. They're just so beautiful and also it allows me to plant flowers on the base of it. One of the most important things that I do is to get a disease resistant rose and thornless. No, it doesn't mean it's going to be completely thornless and it's never going to have diseases, but 
Believe me, it makes a huge difference and it makes my life so much easier since I've been selecting these type of roses. One of my favorites to grow also are climbing roses because you can create almost a tree like I do here on this beautiful trellis and get the shape that you want by controlling the rows. And you can also grow it on a trellis as an arch trellis. This absolutely delightful rose is called Bath Shiva from David Austin and the fragrance is incredible. You need to consider the fragrance of your roses. This is one of the things that is key especially in a small garden you want to walk by and just smell that beautiful scent can you believe that this road is only a year old i cannot believe how much it's grown it's almost to the top of the trellis look at this beauty if you select the right rose it is an incredible experience and i cannot get enough of them I love climbing roses because you can also place them in walls for decoration or your fence. It really dresses it up. The trick with climbing roses in a small space, if you want to shape them like a tree or on the cone, like the cone trellis I show you or an arch or this wall, is that you control the growth. And this is just a lot easier than you think. Let's go through it with this rose. This is the best thing I ever discovered. I love climbing roses and I didn't want to give them up. So I just found one that grows eight to 10 feet. Don't get one that grows way too much that you can't control. And it was perfection. In the space that I have here, I know that I probably want about two or three main branches or main stems. And that will be all I will allow to grow. Everything else I will clean. So here's a few of the branches and I have a few new ones that grew and I had not cleaned because I wanted to show you on this video how to do it. So I'm removing anything that is really small on the ground. All the little buds that are coming out, you need to just control those as they start growing. It's gonna make it a lot easier. Just continue to clean it. Also check for the stems as they're not crossing each other. The ones that are growing little stems of the main one and they're growing opposite from the stem, clip it out. Once you have more than three, you really want to leave around a foot. I leave almost two feet clear because it does rain here a lot to prevent any diseases. There is another one. This one is growing opposite from the stem, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that one too. I have given you many choices for a climbing rose on an arch trellis, on a cone type trellis, and also on a wall or fence. And here I'm growing it on a very narrow column. So you have so many choices when you grow these beautiful climbing roses. You're going to control this one exactly the same way. I'm removing any branches, small stems that are growing opposite from the column. You're not going to be able to control those. Everything else, I go ahead and I tie up. Don't do it too hard. You want the, the plant to be able to grow. So don't damage the stem, just gently tie it up. This is another rose that I got at the same time as the Vashiva that I showed you before from David Austin. Is this just stunning? I'll put the name of it on the screen. It also has a beautiful fragrance, so it is so nice when you walk to get in the house and you smell the rose. There it is, it's bare on the bottom. I tied it all up, two branches, and I tied the new branch and cleaned out all of the roses. It looks good. This is the thing that I love most about roses is the time that I spend that heading them, shaping them, and just making sure that they're okay. Connecting with nature just feels incredible. This amazing time you spend dead heading is going to give you so much more because you're going to get blooms non-stop. Grow a rose, pick a tree. The trees are amazing to grow. They're easy to maintain and they grow so beautifully. If you want to see more of the garden, go ahead and take a look at the tour I did last. I will link it above. You can see what I created from scratch to have the most in production for food and flowers in a cozy backyard. Some of your blooms may come in clusters like this one. There are several clusters together and they open at different times. 
If this one is spent before the leaves start dropping, I will cut this bloom only. So I will continue to do it with all of them. Once the last one opens, I go and I look for five leaves. So you see how there's one, two, three, four, five. And I simply cut right there. I don't worry about cutting in an angle or straight or anything. I've found that either way works. So it is just more critical that you skip the three leaves. And once you bloom, whether it's a single bloom or a cluster of blooms, you go right before those five leaves and you cut right before. Usually right in here, there's a little plant already growing by the time that happens. So all it's doing is getting rid of all the energy it's taken to make seeds on this. Remember, all what the plants want to do is make seeds. So you need to cut it back so that the energy doesn't go in wanting to make the seeds. Cut it right here. A new plant will grow in no time. Here's an example of one where I cut the bloom and there was one growing right at the joint right there. So you see the new branch going up? That's going to produce new buds. Be sure to cut it right before the five leaves. There's the five leaves, one, two, three, four, five, and it will start giving you a new one. The more you do this, the more new buds you're going to get. Let's talk about which type of roses do you need to plant in order to get blooms most of the year from May through probably September, October. This rose, it smells amazing. I have no idea what kind of rose it is. I got this way before I got so much into gardening, but it's done so well. But if you want roses that are gonna bloom the whole summer until fall, uh, you have to get the repeat bloomers. Repeat bloomers are just gonna give you flowers all through the fall. That is what I always try to do. And I have roses in my garden all of the time. This is really critical, especially if you have a small garden, because you don't wanna have a spot that doesn't have flowers a long time in the seasons. One of the most important things that I always do when I plant a rose, whether it is a bare root or I bought it in a store, it comes in a pot, is that I keep the crown outside. The crown is where all of the stems come from. I try to never put that under the soil. I don't want it to rot. Okay, let's talk about fertilizing versus feeding your rose. I like to fertilize my rose in uh, probably March, April, usually March. Sometimes this year I did it in April and then I'll do it again in May. You also use a slow release fertilizer when you plant your rose right at the bottom, wet it really well, mix it with the soil, and then place your plant. So then there's the liquid food, which is different from your slow fertilizer. It's gonna be kind of more satisfaction, much quicker. <laughs> so pretty much it's just a powder or a liquid that you put on water and then you dilute it and then that goes to the plant and the plant absorbs it so much quicker. So you will see so many more blooms. So I'm gonna show you both things that I've used and the one I like the best, I'll tell you which one it is. The liquid food that I like to use are both of these, more bloom and super bloom. More bloom, more if you're not worried about getting uh, more leaves in your plant because they're in good shape, you want more blooms, but this one here will give you both it's much higher on every single number. So let's talk about the numbers. There's three numbers, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Nitrogen for leaves, phosphorus more for the blooms, and the third one, potassium is more for the root system. This is a good one because it has, the middle number is pretty high. So this will work really well. Now I use mostly super bloom. And I know it has really high number. Look at that, 12556. So the blooming number in the middle, 55. This gets you so many blooms. It is really remarkable. I just found this a year or two ago and I've been loving it ever since. This one here is a liquid. This one is a powder. So you dil dilute this one like one teaspoon per gallon 
and if you're growing a rose in a container or a flower you do two teaspoons per gallon because you want more food for the plants since it's in a container it's not getting more as many nutrients as one that grows on the ground directly so this is amazing i love it i would highly recommend it it will make a big difference in your garden every week or every two weeks i do it every two weeks but you can do it every single week One of the most beautiful roses come as rose bushes and they can be pretty large. So the width of them will take so much of your small garden. So you're gonna have to control some of it, but it's actually super easy. All you want is to choose what are the stems that you wanna keep and just what is the shape and the width you want at the end. So I'm going to be choosing four or five stems that I really think are the best ones and all the little ones, I'm gonna get rid of it. Down here, there is my crown and I'm gonna go ahead and start removing all the extra stems I don't want that are small and then I'm gonna start removing the larger ones. This is the pruners that I tend to use for things like this. They're really large and they expand, which I love because this rose I got before it did the thornless and it has pretty big thorns. so. This one adapts to the length that you need. It just makes the job so much easier. I really like them. It was a gift from my husband and I truly appreciate it. So all I'm gonna try to do is get rid of all the small little stems first. So this little growth that they're kind of a red color and lighter leaves, that's new growth. Go ahead and remove it remove any stems that are curving towards these outside also so this one was curving and it's very short so i'm going to start removing all of those don't worry i know it has roses but you're going to end up with a much better plant if you do this on the other side i'm going to have some decisions to make because once i remove the smaller stems that you see the new growth i'm going to have stems that are pretty large and they're curving towards this outside so even though it's painful you gotta remove those curved stems this is what's going to start shaping the tree really well so i am removing every single one of them so i'm still looking to see and i know that this one is it's just stilted too far out so i know i have to remove it now I feel there's a better shape, but I still have some branches that are crossing each other. And I know I'm going to have to remove, remove one of them because it's going to just scrape the other one and start getting sick and die at the end. So go ahead and cut anything that's crossing each other or touching each other. Just choose the healthier branch, the healthier stem, and that's the one you keep. Now I'm cutting everything that's on the crown, all the little stems, the dry ones, the short ones. And the reason you wanna do that is because if you don't cut those pretty far low into the ground, they will start growing new stems. So you don't want new branches. So you can see on this one, I'm cutting it off and there's the little branch. It would just grow some new stem that then you have to remove later on. This makes it a lot easier. And remember, you need to clean the crown really well, the ground really well, remove all the leaves, anything that is dead in there, get rid of it. Now you know everything you need to know about roses to have a successful rose garden and why they're my absolute obsession.